Hey gang, Anthony Radzikavage here, going to do another tutorial on Linux. It's been a little while, but I uh, had a few questions come my way about building up an FTP server. I know this isn't about building up an FTP server, but this will get you on your way to do that. And that is, how do I install CentOS 7? So, uh, in order to do that, we want to go to centos.org, okay? Uh, what you do is you click Get CentOS Now. You can click on this Everything ISO. And you have all these links. It doesn't really matter which one you click. I usually just choose the top one, and then you want to save this file. Now, I already have this file saved, so we won't have to worry about waiting for this. Plus, Hollywood magic, it is a video. So, let's just move on to it. For the sake of this tutorial, I will be using VirtualBox. Now, to create a new virtual machine, you want to click this new icon. And let's go ahead and give it a name. Since we're going to be doing a VSFTP server, let's type VSFTPD uh, sent OS 7. And just like that, just magic, it pops up Linux and Red Hat 64-bit. If you don't see 64-bit options within this list, that probably means that you do not have virtualization on your processor, whether it's available or whether it's enabled in BIOS. So go ahead and look up your uh, manufacturer's guide in order to see, one, if it is available, and two, how to get that. Uh, and then come back to this video for this. So we have the 64-bit Red Hat version. We're going to go next. Uh, just for kicks and giggles, I'm going to give mine 2 gigs. So that's 2048 and click next. We are going to create a virtual hard disk right now. And I'm going to choose VMDK. Uh, this is just something because I also use VMware. Uh, so I'm not choosing VDI. It doesn't really matter here. Anyone is fine. So we'll go next. Uh, we're going to do dynamically allocated. This is definitely what you want. Uh, we will leave this be, except I do want to change it. Um, so for now, let's not focus on this. Let's go to this. And I'm going to make this uh, 30 gigabytes. If you don't have 30 gigabytes available on your computer, make it any size that is reasonable for you. Um, I would suggest definitely over 10, so you have a little bit of playroom as well. So I'm going to um, relocate this VM outside of the defaults of where my other VMs are. So I'm going to click this folder, and you can see that I have Tux, VirtualBox VMs, VSFTP, CentOS. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that off the screen here real fast. You probably still see the path, which is fine. Um, but I have an external... Uh, drive here that I call access and I have VMs inside here. So notice it has a VMDK file. Uh, I do not want to store all of my files within this directory so I'm going to create a new one and I'm going to call it VSFTPD sent OS 7. Now you noticed I made this folder the same exact name as a virtual machine. You don't have to do that. I just do that as a uh, how would I say, just to kind of keep myself in check, make sure that things are organized and I know what it is that I did. If I had it something named like Squirrel, I probably wouldn't know what VM was stored until I went in. It just causes me less headache. So uh, as you see, I went into the folder and I'm going to save this and now it is the whole path of what I specified at 30 gigs. So I click Create and now that part is finished. So with this, we want to, we can either right click and click settings, click control S, or click settings up here. Multiple ways to skin a cat. Now why you would skin a cat, I have no idea why. Uh, but hey, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the storage here. We see this empty disk, so we click on the empty, and you see this disk icon right here. Let's click on that, and what we're gonna do is Choose a virtual optical disk drive, or file, excuse me, file. So this is where I located mine. So this is just under my instructional folder. Um, and I am going to, you can either double click this or click open, and then you will see it populate right next to this disk. So we click OK, and we fire this bad boy up. So let's go. All right, here, 
we can choose to test the media and then install. We can just straight out install it or we can do some troubleshooting items. For the sake of this video, I am just going to install because I did test this ISO file before, as I said, and I know that it is working. Now, when you make any download, I do suggest testing the media this way before you actually install it. But again, to save time, I'm just going to choose Install CentOS 7. You can see here that it's just booting up. And this might take just a little bit. Okay, so now we have the initial installation screen for CentOS. I'm a native English speaker in the US, so I'm going to choose the defaults for me here. Click continue. And you choose whatever is appropriate for you. So, uh, just for, again, for the sake of speed, I'm going to leave the time alone. But if you did want to change it, you could go in here, choose where you're at, what city. You could do uh, network time. But if you do your network time, make sure you have internet connection, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, so, again, I'm just going to leave that to default. The local media is my installation source because I am emulating that I am installing from a CD, even though it's not a CD. Now here's the part that's going to be the gotcha. You see the software selection and it says minimal install? We're going to click on that. And look, we have a lot of different types of installation options. For us, because we're kind of learning Linux, we're getting familiar with it, I'm just going to choose a GNOME desktop. So this will be more of a desktop environment that we will later then turn into servers. And something that I just like to do is just have these compatibility libraries, the development tools, and the security tools. Of course, if you're going to put this into production and not education, then make sure you only have the minimum of what you need. That is a security thing. Uh, if you just start installing all of the different services, you're opening up a lot of doors for people to try to exploit you on that. So uh, from here, we do the installation destination. Again, I want to keep this very simple. Just click on it. It says automatically configure the partitioning. Sounds good to me. Just click done and it'll take a little while and then boom there you go this part is really important because this can be an annoyance for later uh, you want to click on this network and host name button and you want to make sure you toggle this button right here on you want to do this during the installation trust me it's really obnoxious if you don't because every single time your system starts the networking will be turned off so do yourself a favor again click on network and host name make sure this is on if it's not on turn it on all right and from here uh, this is about the time you go get yourself a snack you get yourself a cup of coffee whatever you want to do watch a show um, the installation is going to go however speaking a little too fast look at the root password here uh, we're gonna just set the root password to M uh, 3 L I N U X 273 and capital M 3 lowercase Linux 273. That's just a default password that I use um, that Rob Tracy put in his textbook. And then, of course, when I learned Linux, I learned it with Tux Penguin and I made the username Tux. So we're just going to keep the same fashion. Uh, I'm going to, for the sake of of argument keep the passwords the same now it is important that you realize that tux is not an administrator unless i check this box i am not going to check this box and i do want to require a password to use this account i don't want the user just to be able to turn on the computer and then boom they're logged in so this is just a normal user account, even though I'm using the same exact password. I click done. And even though we took the time to do that, you can see we're, we're less than 300 out of 1300. This is the point where we kind of walk away, take, our, take a little bit of a break for ourselves. Okay, so now that it is finished installing here, it does say complete, and then you just click this reboot button. That's going to reboot your virtual machine here and bring you to the EULA right here. So uh, what you do, it's really easy. License information, license not accepted. Click it, read it. Okay, that's pretty easy. Accept it, done. 
Now it's been accepted. We finish our configuration, allow it to boot, and now you see I have the user Tux Penguin. If I click on this user, I'll type in the password again, capital M three L I N U X two seven three, and click enter. And here we go. This is the GNOME desktop, CentOS 7. It's going to bring up a little welcome startup page kind of thing. You just, this is what I do. I just say, okay, that's nice, that's nice, that's nice. Let's skip that. All right, cool. Now we can use the system. So from here, uh, we're going we're gonna to stop that too. Uh, from here, we can move on to working with a CentOS 7 virtual machine, and uh, I will be making a video very, very, very soon right after this about how to take this brand new, fresh installation and creating a very secure FTP server using FVS FTPD. Thanks so much for watching. Leave a like, share, subscribe. And if you have any questions uh, within the realm of what I am showing you, or even a little bit on the outlier, feel free to uh, shoot a comment or an email, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Y'all have a wonderful day, night, morning, whatever it is, and remember, happy Linuxing!